Hello everyone, welcome back to the FTS Simulation Channel. In this video, we are going to discuss a very important component for vehicles. In fact, it's so important that without it, a vehicle won't be able to turn properly or maintain stability while turning. This component is the differential. Without further ado, let's dive into the discussion. The differential is a set of gears that has actually been around for a long time. It dates back to around 100 BC. So, the differential technology is actually quite old, and this gear configuration was originally used to calculate the positions of the sun and moon. The inventors of this mechanism were Su Chong Chi and Su Keng Chi, mathematicians and engineers from China during the 5th century. This mechanism was used in astronomical devices, such as the armillary sphere, to track the positions of stars and planets. Then, in 1897, the differential was further developed by David Shearer and applied to steam-powered cars, commonly known as steam cars. The story continues in 1932 when Porsche developed and patented the Limited Slip Differential, abbreviated as LSD. In 1958, besides Porsche, Vernon Gleesman also contributed to the development and patenting of the torsion dual-drive differential. Now, what does this device look like, and how does it work? As we know, when the engine starts transferring power to the wheels, the rotation propels the vehicle forward simultaneously, with both left and right wheels rotating at the same speed. However, when the vehicle drives through a turn, we encounter a problem. If the speed of the left and right wheels remains the same while turning, one of the wheels will slip. This happens because the required rotational diameters of the wheels differ when the vehicle is turning. Let's take an example. For those of you who have seen a marching band or a parade performing a rotational movement around an axis, let's call the person in the center of the circle A and the person at the farthest point Z. To move in a circular motion, A only needs to take small steps, but this is very different for Z. In order to maintain a straight axis of rotation, Zad needs to exert more effort to step farther. This is similar to what happens when a vehicle turns. When turning, the wheel on the inner side of the curve must rotate slower, while the wheel on the outer diameter must rotate faster. For wheels that are not connected to a drive system, commonly known as non-driven wheels, this is not an issue because each wheel can rotate freely according to the conditions. For example, this applies to the front wheels of a rear-wheel drive car, or vice versa. This happens because the left and right wheels are not connected in any way. This is different for wheels connected to a drive system, often referred to as drive wheels. These two drive wheels are always connected to a source of rotational energy. However, the problem is that, although the source is the same, these wheels still need to rotate at different speeds between the left and right wheels, just like the example of the marching band earlier. To make this possible in a vehicle, a gear configuration called a differential is installed. Although the differential may seem complex at first glance, it actually works with a simple mechanism. Essentially, each wheel rotates independently or freely, and this is then developed by adding spokes on each shaft to rotate these two wheels, which can be driven via a connecting shaft. However, this causes the wheels to still rotate at the same speed. To solve this, the connecting shaft is made to rotate freely as well. Here, we face another problem. When the wheels rotate too far, the connecting shaft could slip out, causing the wheels to stop rotating. To solve this, the number of spokes is increased, allowing both wheels to rotate freely and continuously. Finally, the wheels can rotate perfectly when turning. Once the wheels can rotate properly, these spokes are refined into gears. The spokes on the rotating shaft become spider gears, and the spokes on the shaft connected to the wheels are called side gears. Now the wheel rotation problem is solved, but how can the engine's rotational energy be transmitted to the differential or axle when the direction of rotation is different? To rotate the differential gear train, crown gears, or crown wheels, and pinion gears are created. These gears can also be referred to as the final drive ratio. Unlike transmission gears that can be adjusted, these gears are fixed, and their ratio determines whether the vehicle is set for acceleration, torque, or top speed. Typically, the ratio is 4.1 for good acceleration but limited top speed, 
and 3.1 for a high top speed but slower acceleration. The larger number in the ratio corresponds to the size of the pinion gear, while the smaller number refers to the size of the crown gear. At this point, the differential is functioning, and the vehicle can turn perfectly. However, we encounter a new problem here. The use of conventional differentials takes up a lot of space, especially in smaller vehicles like sedans, and causes rear-wheel drive sedans to have very high floor clearance. To solve this, the crown gear and pinion gear, which originally used bevel gears, are replaced with hypoid gears. This step is taken to lower the position of the pinion and reduce the bump caused by the drive shaft in the cabin. This is roughly how the conventional differential system, also known as an open differential, works. With this system, the vehicle can turn better and more stably because both wheels can rotate at different speeds and the cabin bump can be minimized. But if we look deeper, we can see another drawback of the differential. The nature of the conventional differential or open differential is that it sends energy to the wheel with lower traction. This is why when a tire passes through a puddle, it can slip, especially at high speeds. This is often noticeable at high speeds, and it's the same when one wheel can't grip because it's on rough terrain. The rotational energy will be fully sent to the non-gripping wheel, causing the vehicle to get stuck. That's why, as mentioned earlier, Porsche developed the LSD, Limited Slip Differential Technology, which uses a clutch system to reduce slipping on one wheel. When the spider gear housing rotates, the clutch is engaged, helping to reduce slip. This technology is also similar to that used in the Torsen differential system. In fact, there are now differentials developed with auto LSD systems, utilizing ABS sensors on the wheels to detect rotational differences between the two wheels. When one wheel experiences slip and rotates at high speed, the sensor will automatically apply braking to the wheel rotating at high speed. The goal is to slow down the rotation and redirect some of the energy to the locked wheel. That's all the basic information we can share about the differential. This is just the basics, as there are also other types of differentials, such as LSD, Auto LSD, Torsen, and even 4WD, AWD, front wheel drive, and rear wheel drive systems. We may discuss the various types of differentials in a separate video. So that's it for this video. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments below. See you in the next video, and thank you for watching.